Hello and welcome to The Journal, I'm Steve Kendall. 2020 has been a year of activism on many fronts and joining us are representatives of two groups who are working to address social justice and racial issues in the city of Bowling Green. From Brave, Black Rights, Activism, Visibility, and Equity, we have Anthony King and Elijah McKnight. And from Not In Our Town, one of the co-chairs, Dawn Chenu, I want to welcome you all of you to Journal today to talk about this particular topic. Um, and Anthony, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about Brave and kind of explain the group and its origin and how it came about and, and, and what its goals and objectives are. Absolutely, uh, Steve. Brave, Brave is a black rights initiative um, group uh, that helps fight social justice um, in small communities or majority white communities uh, like Bowling Green. Mm -hmm. um, we formed shortly after the George Floyd death um, where we organized a peaceful protest in Bowling Green um, which brought out 500 people, so amazing community uh, response to that. Um, after that, we did a Juneteenth event. Um, and since then, we've really just been doing things in the community, uh, such as meeting with city council, um, city administrative officials, um, really making sure black people and people of color have a voice on the city um, political structure here in town. Um, we also uh, put on uh, inclusive events like the Juneteenth event, you know, to help people of color uh, come out into the community um, and freely embrace their skin. Um, we talk about code switching a lot, and so code switching is actually mentally taxing for a lot of people of color, blending in with uh, their surroundings. And so we put on those inclusive events, uh, man, to just help people of color uh, come out to the community and just freely embrace their skin. Um, yeah, now, and I know you've been, and you mentioned the fact that your group has been before city council several times, yeah. um, and, and that's an effort to bring issues in front of them so they're aware of things that are going on, activities that are happening in the town, both from your perspective, things that you guys are doing, and issues that you're you know, uncomfortable with or, or, or really are opposed to. So talk a little about some of the things you've brought before City Council. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I first came to Bowling Green, uh, a common sentiment that I always heard from the black community here was that they felt targeted by the police here. Mm. Um, they felt that the police were targeting them, um, that they were f felt hunted by the police. They felt like they couldn't put on parties because they would always be shut down by the police. They felt that they were stopped um, for all these mundane, mundane uh, stops, uh, like having your, your tail light off. And I was like, a, 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 it was a, it's just common sentiment um, that I heard from my community. And so we brought those things to the, the city council. We brought those things to the police chief, um, and we urged them and encouraged them to research the numbers, you know, research the statistics, you know, of how many times they're pulling over black and brown bodies, you know, how many, and how that really explains to them how that makes uh, our community feel. Um, we really want to protect the mental security uh, of the people of color in town, and so that's uh, a big reason, and that's our stock in going to. Uh, in those spaces like city council and meeting with people like the mayor and the police chief and really just telling uh, them how people of color in the city feel. Yeah. Now, uh, Dawn, Not In Our Town has been around for a number of years and, and it's been an ongoing effort to deal with issues like Anthony just talked about and, and Elijah will be talking about as well. So talk a little about Not In Our Town and, and all of the efforts that have gone into trying to uh, you know, deal with these issues that we think we have behind us but Apparently, we don't sometimes. Sure. So uh, you're right. Not in our town has been around a while. It was uh, formally formed in 2013 uh, in response to some incidents in our community, and uh, it is a joint venture between the city of Bowling Green. Emily Dunapay serves as the community co-chair, and then Bowling Green State University. And at the time, Mayor Dick Edwards and President Mary Ellen Maisie came together to form NIAD, it's part of a national organization and it's an opportunity for communities to say, you know, acts of racism and bigotry are not welcome in our community. And so it started with a lot of uh, conversations, sometimes hard conversations. Uh, as someone who grew up in Bowling Green, it really pains me when I hear from, from Anthony and others about their experiences in our community because that's that's not the community I want Bowling Green to be. And so that's been part of my motivation for being it. Ironically, both uh, Emily Dunapace and I, as the two co-chairs, both grew up in Bowling Green and left and, and now are back. And, and so I think we make a good pair, but are part of a long tradition of this work in Bowling Green with NIAD. And, uh, and we've hosted community conversations. Uh, we've tried to support and make connections across the various groups. Brave is one of our, our partners. 
Uh, there are others, La Comunidad. There are many organizations across Bowling Green, and, and NIAT tries to help connect those, particularly across the campus and the, the Bowling Green community. Yeah, yeah. Now, Elijah, you know, we've, you're, you're a student here at the University at Bowling Green State University. Talk a little bit about you know, how you became involved in BRAVE and, and maybe some of your experiences coming to school here in Bowling Green. Yes, most definitely. Um, well, I'm a fourth year here at Bowling Green State University. Um, so my past, or this past summer, I um, had a chance to actually get to live down here and stay here in this mm -hmm. community. Um, and I learned a lot of things that um, a lot of my, um, my other students or students that look like me are not necessarily aware to good and bad. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people in our community are not aware of not in our town um, and things of that nature. And so Brave, we're just here to, to be here, to be a presence so that not only do people know um, things are trying to be changed, but we have serious potential in this community. This is a beautiful community um, that black folks do love to be a part of. Um, but we have to do more so that we are able to stay here and be able to thrive here in this community, um, students or not. And so, like during here in Brave, we um, just want to really try to create kind of a cultural inclusive environment for everybody to be a part of and for everybody to be celebrated. And so, yeah. Yeah. Now, when you're when you're on campus and with other students or or, or students who are just new to the university. Uh, how do you talk with them and I mean what how what's the approach like when you're saying okay you're in the city of Bowling Green you're at Bowling Green State University here's here's what's going on I mean how, how does that conversation initiate um, it definitely can be one that is a tough conversation to have um, due to the fact that like I said Bowling Green has so many positives but there's so many things that we need to fix um, I think there's a little bit of um, kind of delusion in the community um, when it comes to these issues and people do not necessarily want to accept them because they love their community so much and they wouldn't do you know things um, of that nature and so on and so forth but brave not only are we here to be uh, or we're not here to be investigated but we're here to be informative for our community and so we want to let people know what is actually going on and what help and resources are also available in our community so that we can um, have just a better environment overall. And I, and I guess, you know, and, and again, Dawn, real briefly, I know with Not In Our Town, that was, that was one of the founding parts of Not In Our Town was to inform people, educate people, you know, make people aware of, of what was happening, both, you know, good and unfortunately bad in some cases. No, I think that's really critical. And, you know, part of what I think NIOT's role is, is to help people listen. Um, you know, that, that notion that people don't want to think these things happen. It's just because I don't experience those things when I'm in the community doesn't mean they don't happen. And so uh, increasingly, I think it's, it's more critical than ever for people to learn how to listen, uh, to listen with open hearts and open minds and, and you know, to, to understand that everybody's experience in Bowling Green may not be the same as your experience in Bowling Green. And it, and that's where I think the, the real growth for us as a community. I love your Bowling Green can be a great place and it is a great place. Uh, it's just not experienced the same way uh, for everybody and in, in all, at all times. And so I think that's where we really need to, to yeah. learn to listen to each other in, in different ways. Okay, well, we come back, we can talk more about that. We'll be back in just a moment with representatives from Not In Our Town and Brave here on The Journal on WBGU TV. Thank you for staying with us on The Journal. Our guests are representatives from Brave and from Not In Our Town. Um, and we're joined in this segment by another Brave representative, Bryce Walker, and also uh, the director of Brave, Anthony King, and one of the co-directors of Not In Our Town, Dawn Chenu. So I want to once again welcome you all in for this segment. Um, Anthony, talk a little about some of the initiatives that are upcoming for Brave and, and some of the things you have planned for the future. Absolutely. Um, so Brave, we actually have four pillars or four focus, focus, focuses as an organization uh, that we'd like to tell the majority of people about. Um, well, the first one is our business initiative, is where we really invite black businesses to open up here in Bowling Green. Um, and we also plan on creating a, a system or an incubator um, to where not only are we invite black businesses into Bowling Green, but we're helping them and we're giving them a stable foundation to sit on. Um, and so that they can actually live and have life as a business uh, in Bowling mm -hmm. Green. Um, another one of our initiatives is community outreach. Is where, man, I find that oftentimes groups, organizations, uh, even businesses, um, they want to be more black inclusive. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, they want to be more diverse. You know, they want to answer sometimes their diverse and equity uh, problem if they have one, but they don't know how. They don't know what to say. They don't know when to say it. And so, man, we're going to go into those spaces, um, into those community groups, and help them be more black inclusive. You know, help them invite diversity into their space. You know, man, I believe there is so much power in diversity. And so we want to make sure everyone uh, that wants diversity and wants to tackle their diverse, diverse problem, um, that they, they, they have us available to go into their space and help them. Um, another one of our initiatives is our civic engagement initiative. Um, is where we meet with, with, with city officials. Um, we meet with the police chief. We meet with the police liaison. Uh, we meet with the mayor. And really bring the concerns of the black community here in Bowling Green up to that level. Um, I find in, in towns like Bowling Green uh, that there often isn't any representation for people of color on the local political government structure or scheme. And so what you end up having is you have a lot of white people trying to make solutions um, mm -hmm. or not even making solutions at all for people of color um, in this town. And so man, we go into those spaces, we go into city council, and we really bring the concerns um, of people of color into the, those spaces. I'll give you an example. And so over, over, over the summer, um, a professor uh, emailed me and he said a group uh, called the Four Science Institute were coming here and they were going to train the police officers. Um, and this is a group that had a really negative connotation uh, mm. to all of their trainings. Um, they had a scheduled training with Ohio State back in February or March, I believe. The students found out about that and they completely canceled it. And so the professor told me about the training um, and I found it to be really negative. I don't think I didn't think the police the police department here needed their training to have a shoot first and ask questions later policy, and so what we at Brave did we brought that concern uh, to the mayor we brought that concern to the police chief and we met with them for four for four months, uh, not for four months for four weeks uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe even five weeks, um, and we really told them how about about how if they brought that training here. Um, how that could hurt and harm the mental security of the black community here. And they actually end up canceled the training. Um, and so we really work cohesively uh, with the city administration here in Bowling Green um, to help people of color uh, feel safer. Yeah, well, and I think you make a good point because the more we know about each other, the more, the better we are off. And I think that's one of the things that does get overlooked in a lot of situations that uh, we all think we know other people. We all think we know other cultures, and the reality is we don't to the degree that we perceive that we do. And so it's, it's a good point you make that from the city police department's thing, this seemed like a normal training thing to go through, right. and yet from part of the population's perspective, a, a part of the community's perspective, mm -hmm. this was not going to be a benefit. And yet, I don't, you know, and obviously I don't think from the police department, it wasn't a deliberate thing to say, oh, let's do something that will right. disenfranchise people, but they just didn't know or weren't aware that that's how it would be perceived. And those, those are the doors that need to get opened as, as you're trying to do. And uh, uh, yeah, and, and that. And I think uh, Dawn with Not In Our Town, that's one of the keystones of that is to basically illuminate things for people who may think they know, but don't know. And I really appreciate it. I, I want to do a shout out to Brave because I think they've done amazing work. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of the things that they've uh, helped to push is these need to be part of regular conversations. I think one of the, the challenges is it's easy when there's an incident, right? But NIOT was formed after an incident happened in our community. And, right. and so we can tend to be really reactive and what what we've been trying to focus our efforts on is how to have these conversations regularly so that mm -hmm. that we're helping to uh, create a more proactive environment where where these things won't happen um, right. and so we've been doing these we've been having these community conversations in the in the world of COVID uh, we don't always have these the way we normally would but we've been doing sure. virtual uh, community conversations uh, Anthony and members of Brave have have been on those conversations with us and they've been mm -hmm. well attended. We've tried to, our most recent one focused on the distinctions between hate speech and free speech because right. there was a, again an incident that ha happened related to BGSU that had mm -hmm. implications for the community on, on a, you know, language that was posted by a BGSU uh, employee oh, yeah. on a social media, right? And so, so talking about those all the time helped to raise that level of awareness and and the other thing that I heard Anthony say, which I really appreciated, is that people don't always know how to have these conversations. Mm -hmm. They, 
Uh, when I've talked to uh, my colleagues at the university, our white colleagues often want to help. They want to do things, but they stumble over language. Am I using the right language? Am I, you know, and so we've had conversations about, well, let's make those part of a, a regular conversation to have those when it, when tempers aren't, you know, flaring, when, when it's not so emotional so that we can have those conversations and learn to talk about what are difficult issues sometimes and become more comfortable and then we're better able to respond when those incidents do happen. Mm -hmm. I, th I think uh, a lot of times, just to definitely add on to what Anthony was saying and what you were saying, uh, like our position, you know, our perspective uh, in terms of where it is in our community might, uh, you know, kind of add to us overlooking the, the, a lot of problems that are in the community, community that is happening here in Bowling Green and everywhere. It's not as seamless and uh, in terms of people's understanding, since it's not as seamless, it's a lot harder for people to, to um, kind of relate, uh, mm -hmm. to believe it. And being in Brave, being a part of Brave, uh, we were just citizens of the community. We felt like coming together. Uh, we all do have different perspectives on a lot of things, but we just thought um, it would be best to put our resources together, how we could uh, collaborate, uh, make a better environment for everyone, and hopefully create a sense of understanding, uh, be that bridge, uh, whether it be in the community around us, uh, between uh, either the government and the citizens in the community, or just, mm -hmm. just a bridge in general, outlet of support. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I think one of the things is, and I, and I think it's, a, it's human nature to some degree to say, well, that doesn't happen in my town. You know, that doesn't happen in my school, that kind of thing. And the reality is that it does, but we like to think that that only happens to somebody else somewhere else and as you guys have said it happens everywhere and whether you know whatever the whatever it happens to be whatever the discrimination is whatever the issue is it isn't there's nothing unique about the city of bowling green in a bad way there's nothing unique about it in a good way it's it's a reflection of of the world and yet at the same time i think when we're close to something we look at it and say oh we don't have those, those things don't happen here well you have to get you have to get out in front of them. I think, as Dawn said, you need to be proactive and instead of being reactive. And I think that's that's part of what all these groups are trying to do. Your groups are trying to do as well. So uh, when we come back, we'll we'll talk a little bit more. We've got another segment here yet on the journal. We'll be back in just a moment here on WBGU PBS. Thank you for staying with us here on Journal. We're talking with a couple of representative groups here in the community that are dealing with issues that Bowling Green, like every place in the country, is not immune to issues of uh, race and understanding and getting along with each other. And I think uh, we're, we have representatives here from Brave. Uh, in this segment, we'll have Elijah McKnight and Bryce Walker, and also a representative from Not In Our Town, one of the co-directors, Don Chenu. Um, and I know that Brave has a lot of things planned. We've talked about uh, some of them, but uh, um, Elijah, talk a little about some of the specific things that are upcoming that people need to know about that Brave will be involved in in the community. Most definitely. Um, a part of our solution is not only doing uh, constructive work um, in our city and things of that nature, but it's having fun um, and it's exposing the people to the culture that um, we want to kind of share here. And so Brave is going to be doing a lot. Um, we will be doing another Juneteenth. Um, of course, as we did put on the first of its kind, um, the first ever in Bowling Green, we will be also having a um, MLK event um, at the beginning of the year, which is, I'm very excited for. And so we just have a lot in store for you guys to be able to come in and kind of um, see and learn not only about sad things that have happened in the past, but learn how um, black people move and how we interact and so that we can all adapt um, and so we don't have to necessarily have that kind of code switching uh, margin. So there is a lot that we have in store. We plan on working with a lot of um, nearby organizations, grassroots and student oriented. And so this is just going to be an amazing year. And I am so excited for what we have in store for our community. Yeah. Now, you mentioned, I know that almost all of us know, and I, I believe should know what Juneteenth is. But for those who may wonder what that is, explain what Juneteenth is for some of our viewers. Most definitely. Um, Juneteenth is a celebration of the um, freedom of slavery. And um, this is a time that isn't, it's, it's not super specific. Um, June 19th is the um, kind of national day that it is celebrated. But um, in a lot of communities, it is celebrated over a weekend, over like a span of three days. And so this is just a great time to just uh, come out. And it is a symbol of remembrance for us. 
and it is also um, shows us that we also have a lot of work to do as well. Sure. Okay. Good. Thank. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Dawn, not in our town, always has things going on, always has events, always working toward making this a better community. Talk about again some of the things that uh, that your group has planned. Sure. So we'll continue to do the monthly community conversations uh, as we approach the election. We're putting something together now to talk about. Now, how do we continue to talk about ideas in a civil, constructive fashion? And so we're pulling that together. Uh, we also have launched a monthly column. Uh, Mayor mm -hmm. Osbacher and President Rogers did the inaugural column for us last month. Uh, and it's called Words Matter because right. uh, that's one of the things that I think everybody is probably growing more sensitive to, the language that we use and the words sometimes incite, can incite good things to happen and it can certainly incite violence. And so we're focusing on some of the words that are used in our community and, and how those words mean different things to different people. Uh, we also are helping to partner with the Human Relations Commission on a community read. So we've been meeting with members of the community and the university faculty to organize some reading groups around, uh, so you wanna talk about race, which is a great book to help all of us think about those conversations that we should be having uh, with one another in constructive ways. And so we'll be uh, sharing that. Details about all of our events are available on our Facebook page. And I'm sure that information about the uh, community reads will be available throughout the city soon. Yeah, okay, great. And and I wanna come back, if we have a few minutes for, after we talk with Bryce, I want, I want to talk about words because I think that's something that seems to have gotten lost a lot now that people, oh, they're only words. Well. Words do matter. You made a good point about that. Um, Bryce, talk about us, uh, follow up on some of the things too that, uh, that Brave is, is going to be doing as well. well uh, I definitely want to talk about uh, just uh, Brave's position. Uh, we try to be very active and responsive to the needs of the community as the things are unfolding. So as of recently, uh, with the election and everything around voting, Brave has definitely been doing our part to encourage voting, encourage citizens to be, to vote, uh, to show up, and how important it is for citizens to vote in this country. Uh, it, a lot of other problems with the community, like uh, specific problems in the community, whether it is businesses that uh, recently with Tate Eclipse, he's one of the first barbershops mm -hmm. that opened up this summer. Uh, we've definitely been talking to him about ways we could support him to keep him here, to not only not, we do have a minority of black business in the city, but just ways that we could support him, uh, mm -hmm. talk to him about his experiences in the city and how he could possibly use his resources to, to even help other oncoming businesses. So it's just like a, a it's ongoing, Brave is ongoing. Uh, we just want to emphasize that, that uh, it, it's not even in terms of matter of like event day to day or week to week or here to here, it's just the needs of the community. Yeah, it's, it's what's going on every day in the community, doesn't it? It doesn't have to be a specific event, it's, it's what you're doing ongoing, yeah. Um, it, go back real quick, and I know we're, we've got like about three minutes, so we're not gonna be able to give this the full justice it deserves. But uh, Dawn, you made an interesting comment that the segment on words mean something, words matter. And I think that's something that seem, we seem to have lost in the country at large that, well, someone will say something and depending on their platform, it gets whatever coverage it gets. Uh, but there seems to be an assumption sometimes by people that words are just words and come on, you know, just shake that off and move on. But the reality is words do mean something and they mean something different to different people. And I, that's, that seems to somehow, how we communicate that, we're gonna have to use words obviously. Uh, I, I just don't see how we've lost that situation where, as you said, hate speech, free speech, uh, where those lines are, what's, what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, you know, it, uh, first I want to just do a quick shout out to our local media uh, because mm -hmm. both the BG Independent and the Sentinel are covering the Words Matter column. Mm -hmm. They don't usually publish the same content. And so we're grateful that they thought these messages were important enough that they uh, both agreed to run this on a monthly basis. But I think, you know, to be honest, social media, I think, has done a lot to that. We increasingly talk to people who believe a lot the way we believe. And so there isn't that broader conversation. And, you know, it's easy to to take a break from somebody on social media who thinks differently than you do. And, and I think then 
you forget that the words that we use don't always sound the same and they aren't received the same way. So I do think they matter and I think we need to be more conscious of the language that we use so that we are inclusive and respectful. Right, yeah, and I, I know uh, Bryce, Elijah, I don't know, I mean, is that something that y you guys confront that people use words and they don't seem to understand that that may be a pro that, that it has an impact on you, not in a positive way, or in the or in the community at large, in a positive I way. I think that definitely fa uh, falls into uh, mm -hmm. sort of like the micro, slight microaggressions that uh, some people might mm -hmm. have, and they just might not be aware of how certain words can affect uh, certain types of people. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a lot of times they're just not just knowledgeable about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's. That's ultimately it. I don't know if Elijah had anything to add to yeah. it. Yes. Um, you get the last word, by the way. Yeah, for sure. No problem. Um, but <laughs> okay. um, yeah, words, words are very, very important and they um, can be very, very detrimental, um, especially to communities in the way we talk with each other and amongst each other. But um, one thing that can definitely override that and start to fix that is if we start to change structurally. If uh, people understand that it is not tolerated um, to um, you know, say hate speech or say hate crime, um, then people will most likely not do that as openly and things of that nature. And if that does happen, um, there's a consequence um, and, or a custom that we have set as a community, a place by us that, you know, we feel is, 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 is correct. And so. Yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. And I, I want to thank, uh, you know, Elijah Mike McKnight, Bryce Walker, Anthony King, Don Schnew. Thank you so much for coming on. We will have you back in the future because I, you know, I think we'd like to think we wouldn't have to have this conversation again, but I got a sneaking suspicion we might. But uh, we'll make progress and we'll do everything we can to, uh, to move this issue in a positive way. So thank you so much for being on with us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Good. And definitely, thank you. Oh, yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, but definitely be on the lookout uh, for Brave as we approach to becoming an, an mm -hmm. official nonprofit ah. very shortly. Uh, also follow us on our socials if possible, Brave BG Ohio on Instagram, Brave underscore BG on H on Twitter, and just Brave on Facebook, Blacks Right, Activism, Visibly Equity. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. And you can check us out at WBGU.org, and of course you can watch us every week on WBGU PBS and all the social media as well. We'll see you again next time here on The Journal on WBGU PBS.